Many people associate Cuba with salsa, Che Guevara, and Buena Vista Social Club, but the island has much more to offer. Learn more about the places worth visiting in this video. It is said that the most important elements of life in Cuba are music and dance. Many of Latin America's most important dances have their roots here. Quite a few of the rhythms and dances are derived from rituals performed by slaves, their music and instruments. Several musical styles and dances such as son cubano, bolero, rumba, mambo, and of course, salsa can be listed as an example here. Cuba's music is unique. The guitar that conquered urban and rural areas originated in Spain. In addition, there were rhythmic drums from Africa, joined by brass instruments over time. Cuban music, versatile but remaining timeless that can be rediscovered again and again, was born out of all these. Cuban cuisine is a blend of Spanish, Caribbean, and African tastes. Traditional Spanish recipes have been transformed into wonderful culinary creations through the influence of spices and flavors. A typical meal consists of rice and beans, which are usually cooked together. However, beans are sometimes served separately as a thick soup along with the main course typically of pork or beef, and also vegetable broth, such as yuca, malanga, or potatoes. Other popular side dishes include bananas and avocados. Ropa Vieja is shredded beef that is cooked in a Creole tomato sauce and is definitely worth trying. Tamales are equally popular. They are made of corn flour, vegetable fat, and pieces of pork or chicken. Tamales are wrapped in corn leaves, tied and then cooked in salt water. There is another must-try dish in Cuban cuisine. It is a mixture of field fruit, vegetables, and meat cooked into a tasty soup of such nutritional value that it is said to raise the dead. This dish is agiaco. You don't have to take notes. We have included all the practical info in the description below the video. That's where you can also find links with accommodation tickets to attractions and tips on how to pay abroad so as not to overpay on currency conversions. Cuba offers a variety of artistic events, such as a ballet festival, the Biennale of Fine Arts, as well as music and film festivals. Every December, Havana hosts the Festival International del Nuevo Cine Latino Americanacan. It is the most important film festival in Latin America attracting fans from all over the world and also an increasing number of Hollywood stars in recent years. The carnival celebrated in February dates back to the time of slavery. Every four years in January, an association of slaves of an African people called Cavaldos would elect their king and walk the streets in their colorful costumes singing and dancing. As the celebration was very different from religious holidays, it always attracted many participants. After the 1969 revolution, the carnival was postponed by the government until July so as not to threaten the sugarcane crops. For economic reasons, it was banned only to be celebrated again from 1996. In 1999, it was moved back to its original time period of February. Unfortunately, these regulations are not applied equally throughout the country, so in some regions the carnival is celebrated at different times of the year. In Cuba, the sun shines 330 days a year. The tropical climate means that the island is almost never cold. The summer months, from May to October, are the rainy season. Short, heavy afternoon showers, accompanied by thunderstorms, are typical for this period. The humidity is then up to 95%. July and August also have drier periods and temperatures reach up to 35 degrees Celsius. Hurricanes are also to be expected between July and October. Winter dry season between November and April is more pleasant. 
That's when the trade winds often blow and the average temperature is 25 degrees. The temperature of water encourages swimming all year round as it ranges from 25 to 28 degrees. The island is a paradise with about 8,000 different plant species. The most famous tree is the silver royal palm which can reach up to 40 meters in height. It is the national tree of the island. For the Cubans, the royal palm symbolizes the steadfastness of the Cuban people. The palm's wooden bark are processed into furniture or roofs. About a quarter of the island is covered with pine and mahogany forests. The Cuban landscape is diverse. The northern coast is rocky in parts with steep shores. The southern coast is rather shallow and swampy. The highest mountain range is the Sierra Mastra. Havana attracts with its magnificent old town, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The charm lies primarily in the contrast of beautifully restored buildings that meet with ruined colonial buildings. The best impression of Havana's former beauty can be found on the Call Obispo. Of course, a visit to the Malacan waterfront promenade is a must. East of the Castillo de la Punta is its most beautiful part which attracts lovers and romantics. Plaza de la Revolución, the capital, the Grand Teatro, and the cathedral should also be on the list of things to see in Havana. A visit to a regular grocery store is highly recommended too. Where the rich and the poor meet is where you can not only get the best sense of the authentic image of the country, but also of the people. Unlike Havana, Trinidad offers tourists an organized city with colorful colonial style houses, narrow streets, and above all, loud music and a truly Cuban vibe. Anyone who loves passionate sounds should head to Quesa de la Musica where you can dance all night long. Plaza Mayor, the Judith Vidal Faith Museum, and the famous Ancon Beach are among city's most popular attractions. Located 180 kilometers west of Cuba's capital, the town of Valle de Vinales is surrounded by the beautiful Vinales Valley known for its tobacco plantations, limestone rocks, and above all, caves. The Mogotes rock formations were formed 170 million years ago and consist of limestone. They were declared a UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site in 1999. A trip to this part of Cuba is especially rewarding if you want to experience the rural climate and are also fascinated by wildlife. The starting point for a trip from this region is the town of Vinales, where you will find many accommodation sites and restaurants. Santiago de Cuba is home to the UNESCO World Heritage Sites of the Castillo del Moro and the Moncada Barracks, where you can follow in the footsteps of Fidel Castro and the Bacardi family. If on the other hand you want to visit tobacco, fruit, and vegetable plantations in a cigar factory, you should go to Valle de Vinales or Pinar del Rio directly. Strong French influence in the urban planning of Cienfuegos can still be seen to this day. The city is a great place for tours and one of Cuba's most famous attractions. Cienfuegos was once a pirate port off the coast of today's island. The city was founded in the early 18th century by French settlers. To this day, impressive streets are part of the city's characteristic features. This city even has its own triumphal arch. The checkerboard-like road network also indicates the influence of the French families who once lived here. In addition to the aforementioned triumphal arch, Jose Marty Park is also worth a visit. Varadero is primarily known for its sandy and beautiful beaches. The city is located in the north of Cuba on the Haikakos Peninsula. Although the magnificent beaches of Varadero are the main attraction of the region, there are also other interesting things to see. One of these is the giant cactus, known as the Patriarch, because of its size. 
The land crabs found in the western part of the village also attract the attention of tourists from all over the world. The Jardines de la Reina Archipelago is located south of Cuba in the Caribbean Sea. It is 120 kilometers long and is the third longest coral reef in the world. 600 coral islands form a unique nature reserve of great biodiversity. The archipelago was named by Christopher Columbus in honor of the Spanish queen and has a colorful underwater life to offer with tropical fish and unique corals. The archipelago is considered one of the most pristine coral reefs in the Caribbean, is strictly protected, and still retains its intact ecosystem to this day. Jardines de la Reina is a dream diving spot and one of the most beautiful places in Cuba. Not only does it offer a unique opportunity to observe sharks, but often also sea bass, barracuda, and parrotfish. Lizards, crocodiles, and flamingos can also be found here. There is no doubt that one of the best cigars in the world come from Cuba. In the Pinar del Rio region, there is no better place to see how and where these Cuban specialties are made. There are entire tobacco plantations that will offer you the opportunity to roll up your own cigar. Much has been heard about the Cubans who radiate positive vibes. Their national traits are kindness and being helpful. Tourists in Cuba are greeted very warmly. You can meet musicians and artists on the streets who create an amazing atmosphere. Everyone will always be helpful and will invite you to dinner or a club dance party on many occasions. Free Wi-Fi, in the strict sense of the word, does not exist in Cuba. Only large state hotels and a few public places offer internet access. There is a per hour charge for an internet connection. An hour of Wi-Fi use costs one and a half of convertible Cuban peso. You can browse Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram without restrictions. But Snapchat, for example, does not operate. Sometimes the connection may not work or is interrupted. To enter Cuba, you need a passport which must be valid for at least six months. It is necessary to have a tourist card, Tarjeta del Turista, which must be purchased before the trip. The card can be obtained from the Cuban embassy, travel agencies, or airlines. It is mandatory upon entry and entitles you to stay in the country for 30 days. Remember that you must also purchase travel health insurance before your trip. Without it, you could be denied entry. There are two currencies in Cuba, the Cuban peso and the convertible peso for tourists. In Cuba, there are state-run hotels in Casa Particularis. Casa Particularis are private accommodations similar to a guest house. This is the cheapest and most authentic way to stay in Cuba. An overnight stay in a Casa Particular in a double room costs an average of 2040 Cuban peso per room. Breakfast is included in almost all cases. The rooms are clean and the owners make every effort to ensure a great stay. Lunch and dinner are also provided by Casa Particulares. Good food costs between 8 and 12 Cuban peso. The portions are more than adequate. The standard is roughly equivalent to a three-star hotel. There are state hotels of all categories in Cuba, but outside of Veradero, there are very few in the five-star category. They are usually more expensive than accommodation in Quesa particular. You can experience socialism on your own there. For breakfast, there is often only one type of cheese, pancakes without sugar or milk and only made of water and flour, and coffee tastes awful. A room in a mid-range hotel costs about 50 Cuban peso. Hotels are often unattractive and expensive for individual tourists because they focus on organized tourism. Cuba is a wonderful country that has a lot to offer. A trip to this magnificent place is definitely recommended in order to experience the vibe yourself. It is impossible to describe it in words. Dancing, music, and joy accompany the residents on the streets every day. 
You will not find such an atmosphere anywhere else. On top of that, beautiful beaches, nice weather, and tasty food you are likely to fall in love from day one. Certainly, a trip to Cuba will remain in a person's memory for a long time. If you're already planning your trip, you can find accommodation and tickets to attractions on the spot in the links under the video description. You can also order a card for cheap payments abroad the same way. Press the bell and subscribe to our channel if you want to receive notifications about new episodes. Have a nice trip.